In this footage submitted by Jason, something happens that if it weren't caught on dash cam, you wouldn't believe it. It was around 1 in the morning. Jason was on his way to what he thought was going to be the house of a woman he matched with on a dating app. The person had given Jason their address over the app. They had not exchanged numbers. After putting the address into his phone, he realized that not only was the address 20 minutes away, it was also in a less desirable side of town. Against his better judgment, he got in his car anyway to head to the given address, which was in a cul-de-sac. After entering the cul-de-sac, he realized all three houses had all of their lights out, and when he tried to message the girl he matched on the dating app, she would no longer answer. After waiting a few minutes for an answer, he realized the person had unmatched him, meaning it may have been a trick or prank, and so he turned the car around. As he was leaving the cul-de-sac, he noticed- If I matched with some- Yo, Mural Mango for another 10 gifted subs, dude. Holy fucking shit. Thank you for the 10 gifted again, Mural Mango. Oh my god. What a fucking dub. Appreciate the subs, dude. So many subs today. Thank them if you got a sub. Thank you for the fucking 20 gifted cumulative just now. Fuck. Uh, also, if I was on a fucking dating app and I matched with someone, I'm never meeting them in a private place the first time you fucking hang out. Wouldn't you, uh, I don't know, meet in a fucking public area where you can't get murdered? Someone on the sidewalk stepping out into the street, and so he locks his doors and slows down. This is the footage captured on the dash cam. Just keep driving. Like, that's not even really that scary. It's like, oh, that's weird. Yeah, it's kind of scary. Dude, you're in a car. You're in a moving car. They're in a fucking... They're just in a hoodie. Like, I'm gonna just step on the fucking gas. I'm gonna run that bitch. I'm gonna go 70 miles an hour down a fucking neighborhood road. Oh, he had a gun? I'll just run him over. Yeah, just keep the footage driving. is kind of grainy, so it's hard to make out some of the smaller details. But basically what happened was Jason slowed down as he saw a masked person walking into the middle of the street, immediately knowing something was off because there was nothing across the street except a busy highway. So he locks his door and comes to a stop as the person is directly in front of his car. Yo, I would run them the fuck over. I don't know why this man said, oh, let me pull away. He runs at me, I see him pull a gun out of his pocket, I'm fucking flooring that and his head's gonna be literally fucking mush on the side of the fucking road then the masked person chill out dude he's pointing a gun is into his pocket grabs a handgun that's a little hard to see in the video due to lighting and then i'm gonna hit that i'm gonna hit that fucking turbo bitch and starts running towards his driver's side door Jason immediately My fucking off-road Jeep Wrangler is going to fucking floor over his skull like it's a speed bump. Steps on the gas and drives past the man, who then tries to open the door, which thankfully was locked mere seconds earlier. It's hard to see unless you pause and zoom in, but the man... You would go to jail. No, you would not. No, you would not. He's pointing a gun at you. Max watched this. That's crazy how I'm not Max. See you tomorrow, man. The video was wearing a creepy smiling mask. The man didn't fire any rounds, but that's also under the assumption that the gun was even loaded or real. It's not that uncommon to hear about people using fake guns in scenarios like this. I'm gonna say this though. If you use, I've seen videos where a guy used a fake gun to rob a restaurant. I saw it on Twitter. A guy you, or X, on X. I saw it on X because it's not Twitter anymore. He, he tried to rob either like a bank or a fucking restaurant with a toy gun that was painted black. And the guy fucking killed him. Who's in the wrong? I just actually want to know my, what my chat's opinion on this is. You bring a fake toy gun painted black into a store. You rob the store and somebody shoots you in the head. Yeah, you had a fake weapon. It looked like a real gun. It was a BB gun. If you take off the tip of a BB gun and paint that shit black, it looks like a fucking real gun. Mural Mango for the 25 gifteds. 
Thank you for the 25 gifted Spiral Mango Joe fan for the sub. Appreciate the subs, Spiral. My God, dude, how many subs have you even given today? You gave so many earlier on. Thank you for the fucking subs, dude. I appreciate that shit. What was strange about this was while even though it was in a less desirable end of town, it was still a very residential block right next to a highway. So it was a slightly questionable place to pull this. However, it doesn't take a detective to put the pieces together that this was a setup through the dating app to lure some unsuspecting guy to a dead-end road in order to rob him at gunpoint or worse. According to Jason, the spot in which the man stepped into the street was out of view of any houses as it ran alongside a long fence and bushes. Jason reported the whole incident to the police, including the given address. Jason was accompanied with a police officer to knock on the door of the address in question the next day, and an older woman who claimed to live alone answered the door. She claimed she had nothing to do with it, and that's obviously pretty likely to be the truth. Meaning or it was the old woman standing on the fucking road. Or it was the old woman holding the fucking gun with the weird purge mask on. And a person simply chose that address because the street was low-key and hidden. Debatably a perfect spot to try and set somebody up. Luckily, Jason didn't decide to stay put and got away without harm, because who knows what could have happened. Before the next clip, I just want to talk about today's sponsor. I was sponsored by Aura. I like Aura, but however, I am going to skip this. On November 23rd, 2016. Ghost for the three. What was that exquisite game you were playing earlier? For Honor and Swift for the three. What's your opinion on people who don't tip waiters? I mean, it depends what country you're in. Because some countries don't tip. But I think ordering, like, if you order, like, a $5 item and you don't tip, that's, like, not that big of a deal. But if you fucking get, like, $30 of food and you leave, like, a dollar, like, that's fucked. Somebody redeemed Flex and Daisy. Redeem the, uh, or refund the Daisy. Uh, but I'll do the Flex. I'll do Daisy tomorrow. Re uh, redeem Daisy earlier on in stream. The day before Thanksgiving, like we're, we're at like that, the last 10% of the stream. A fire began on the Chimney Tops to Trail the in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. Uh, and Toxic for the sub. Opulse for the 480 bits. When will merch and drink sponsor happen? I said this earlier. Merch probably late August, early September. Drink sponsor probably like two to three weeks. The fire was sparked by a group of kids. I don't even remember what the fuck this guy was saying. Hold up. November 23rd, 2016. The day before Thanksgiving. A fire began on the Chimney Tops Trail in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. The fire was sparked by a group of kids playing with matches in the woods, and it was fueled by unusual- Who the fuck is playing with matches in the woods? Mural for the five gifted. Thank you for the five gifted, Mural. The 25 gifted and the 210 gifted that you gave, dude. Dams for the sub, Babu, for the 5,600 biddies. You've awoken the chipmunks, Joe, and then they put Joe Bar Alvin. Thank you for the fucking 5,600 biddies. Mural, thank you for the fucking subs, dude. Dubs in the chat for both of those motherfuckers. Babu4791, thank you for the 5,600 bettys. Thanks for the sub. And Mural, thank you for all the subs you've given this stream. Usually high winds. Flames erupted in a remote area with steep terrain that made access to the fire difficult for firefighters. Crews spent three days working to create a containment area lower down the mountain. Helicopters flew overhead doing bucket drops to attempt to slow the spread of the fire. On the fourth day, Winds picked up, and the fire... How much do those bucket drops actually do? Like, how big is... How how much water is in that? Like a bathtub, or is it like a shitload of water? A decent amount? I'm saying it probably looks like it does fucking nothing. They don't do shit. 400 gallons? Like, wh how much is that? How much is a bathtub? Like, 50? attempt to slow the spread of the fire no a bathtub would probably be like 10 gallons on the fourth day winds picked up and the fire spread but the gatlinburg fire chief said projections showed no immediate threat to gatlinburg despite the predictions on monday november 28th dry weather and extreme winds caused the fire to grow rapidly that evening wind gusts of up to 87 miles per hour sent embers flying 200 into to 3,000 gallons yeah 3,000 gallons i could see doing a lot gatlinburg wreaking havoc on the city and surrounding communities town officials reported that evacuation alerts were sent out to residents cell phones but many residents said they never received any alerts 14 people were killed and 191 people were injured in the fire Wow. The flames destroyed nearly 2,500 homes and left an estimated $2 billion worth of damages. 
resident Michael Luciano recorded his and his stepbrother's horrifying escape down the mountain. During the drive down, just about every single passing oh, cabin driving through the fire cabin is seen engulfed in flames. Oh, God. Wow, dude. That looks like you're in a fucking video game. We'll get out of it. Hit the gas. Hit the gas. Hit, yeah, exactly. Hit the gas. I can't see. I'd say the same damn fucking thing, dude. You got about two feet of visibility. About to run into a tree. See? Why is every cabin on fire? Fuck. Oh, I don't, shit. I don't think. I don't know about this. Was there no forewarning? Like, did they leave late? I feel like you could leave before it got this bad. Just started. Looks like they're in the nether. Now, nah, probably like transit from BO, uh, BO what? BO2? BO1? She love for the sub. Hey, Branch, we're going the wrong way. Oh, Fredo for the sub, she love for the three. Uh, mission for the sub. And dude, Babu, uh, for the 5,600 biddies and mural. Thank you for the subs again. What? I hear their oh, dog God. in the back. Wow! Oh, and at multiple points, the two men find themselves stuck behind fallen trees. Go through it. Go through it. I can't. I cannot be stuck. Try it on the left side where these sticks are short. Get a running start. Even at really one point getting stuck in the car stuck behind another driver, which happened to be an old man who rolled his window down to tell Michael that he couldn't see. Does this motherfucker want to die here? <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? Go! Get the fuck out of here! Right. I'm trying. I can't see. I have night blindness. Well, move out of the fucking way, Grandpa. I'm getting the fuck out of here alive. I have night blindness, though. My doctor said... Oh, I don't give a fuck what your doctor said. Hit the gas, old man. The old man ended up pulling to the side and following Michael's taillights down the mountain. At certain points, it seems very likely the men aren't going to make it out alive. But by some stroke of luck, they made it to the containment area with only minor damages to their truck. Their luck didn't just end there, though. Their cabin survived the fires with very little damage. Their cabin survived? Dude, they passed one house that was just entirely on fire. Bro! It's gone too far, Joe Jobert, Alvin Jobert, Alvin Jobert, Alvin Jobert, Alvin. Dude, thank you for the 11,500 biddies, Babu. She loved for the sub, she loved for the fucking sub again. Dude, thank you for the fucking 11k biddies, man. Oh my god. That is so many fucking bets, dude. Holy shit. Oh, I had a burp. My bad. Dude, thank you for the fucking biddies. Spam the Joe Bar Alvin emote. Little Joe Bar Alvin in the chat for the fucking biddies, dude. Thank you, Babu. My god. Despite its close proximity to the surrounding engulfing flames, while this footage can almost make you feel like you're in the truck with them, it obviously can't compare to the actual fear of being in the suffocating heat inside the truck mixed with tension of the life or death situation at yeah, hand. How hot do you think it was in the truck? And I'd have that AC bumping. In this footage, a young girl who wished to remain nameless, so I'll refer to her as Amanda, was driving home from her boyfriend's house. She had just pulled out of the driveway and started heading down her boyfriend's block when a car in the middle of the road came into view. The car wasn't moving, but didn't have its hazards on, so Amanda waited for a few moments, until the driver in front of her lowered his window and waved for her to go around him, so she did. Upon passing the car, she quickly realized the car behind her started moving as well, which at first wasn't too weird, but it became clear very soon that the car was following her after it started making the oh same- Oh my god, dude, motherfuckers follow me on the road all the time, you gotta fucking gas that bitch, fucking run a yellow, it hits them on a red, and they gotta fucking stop. And then you fucking bust a right into a fucking, in, into a goddamn random road, and then you lose them. Turns she made. She started to make as many random turns as possible, and sure enough, the car behind her stayed on her tail.
bro. I'd fucking bust. I'd bust a left into a parking lot and then just fucking start doing like circles. She then calls her boyfriend, which I muted at her request for privacy. And she explained to him that somebody was following her. He reassured her to keep calm and everything would be fine. And to just drive to the nearest police station. There's people that'll follow Brooke out of Hooters. I mean, like, that's not even that shocking when you're thinking about Hooters. But, like, there's guys that will go to Hooters and follow the Hooters girls to their cars. Like, creepily. Like, really, cre like, almost kidnapping, like, level weird. Uh, not like, oh, they'll talk to them. Like, they'll tail them from, like, 50 feet away and, like, follow them to their car. And so, like, they'll try and get into the elevator with them. Like, they'll see the guy at Hooters. And then as they're leaving, it's like a 10-minute walk to a fucking elevator. And then, like, the guy will try and get in the elevator with them, and they'll just step out of the elevator and be like, you go. And then the guy will have to go because he, he's, he doesn't know where he's going. He's just trying to follow them. Nothing for the five. Your videos make my day? Thank you. Uh, and she loved for the sub. She'll call me sometimes when it happens. Uh, just so I'm on the phone. So she looked up the nearest... Flex. Somebody redeemed police precincts and when they were only a few blocks away from it the car behind her turned the opposite way likely because they knew she was going to the police station still on the phone with her boyfriend she told him the car behind her turned a different direction so her boyfriend assured her she should be fine to go straight home just be cautious amanda drove home after this which was in the I same mean, sometimes town sometimes you think people are following you when they're not what you really got to do is just go in a loop uh, like, if you think somebody's following you, just literally go in a circle back to where you were, because there would be no reason they would go in a circle unless they were following you, right? So it was unlikely to be a long trip home. She even checked to make sure the coast was clear before parking her car and going inside. But later in the night, she woke up to this. How would they find her house? Amanda heard sounds right outside her bedroom window, like someone was trying to lift it open from the outside. Once she turned the lamp on, the noise stopped. She called for her dad when she realized what was happening, and the occurrence was immediately associated with the vehicle that was following her earlier. So the family called the police to file a police report and showed them the dashcam footage of the vehicle following her. The vehicle could be identified as a BMW, and Amanda was asked if she knew anyone who owned a BMW that might want to hurt her. The only person she could think of was a guy named Christopher Crea, somebody who she blocked on social media for obsessive harassment. She's gonna keep her name anonymous, but she's gonna fucking just give the dude straight up full name? Wouldn't that just insinuate, like, who she is instantly? ...who happened to drive a black BMW. These were the last texts Chris... ...who wants to remain anonymous, we're gonna call her Amanda. Uh, but, uh, the dude Jonathan Wickens... ...Christopher had sent to Amanda before she blocked him. Christopher happened to know Amanda's boyfriend personally through mutual friends, and through those I have never gotten that many bits in my entire life. I have never gotten that many bits in my entire life in one fucking sitting, dude. There is no fucking way. There is no fucking way. Hold up. What the fuck? Sorry, I could get top dono, damn it. Sorry, I could get top do- Yo, I gotta buy something for a stream with that money. What do I get? What do I get? Babu for the fucking 57,500 bits said, Sorry, I could get to top dono, damn it. Jumbo for the, for the fucking 300 bitties uh, and jump for the sub.
I wanted to say, I hope you have a good day. First time watching your stream. Thank you. Mr. Frank for the sub, nothing for the five. She love for the sub. Dude. What the fuck? A furry costume? A furry costume's like six grand. A new mic? I have a, I already have a good mic. Another lava lamp. Yo, you're fucking insane, dude. Babu for the fucking 57,500 biddies. Oh my god. Put a dub in the fucking chat for Babu4791. Joe Bar Alvin's in the fucking chat since he likes that emote. Or they like that emote. What the fuck? I'm going to see if they said anything text-wise. I'm looking up their user. Dude. That is insane. Dude, you have so many fucking bits cheered in like one day. Buy another boxing guy? Where the fuck would I put him? That guy takes up so much fucking space. His base is like three feet by three feet. Supremio for the sub, Harper and your zombie for the sub, nothing for the 1,100 biddies, best streamer of all time, thank you, and jump scare for the sub, dude, you're fucking insane, I, Dude, thank you for the fucking 20,000 goddamn biddies, Morocco. Holy shit. Babu for the 57,000 biddies, Morocco for the 20k biddies. What? Oh my god. Thank you. Like, I don't know how I can freak out more. That is insane. A Danny DeVito cutout. I'll buy a cutout of, of something right now. Literally, I'll buy a cutout of something right now. Fuck. What would I buy a cardboard cutout of? Nick A30? I don't think that's a thing. Bro, do you think I could do a custom cardboard cutout of Nick A30? I could. Mods, can you send me a link to, like, a custom cardboard cutout of Nick A30? And I will buy that. Like, I don't care if it's, like, 150 200 fucking dollars. Dude, I will buy that shit. Johnny Depp. A Quebble Cop. Quebble cop. Trey go for the sub. Caban for the three. Use the money to buy a PS5 for exclusives. Ooh. Where do where do you buy a PS5? When would it deliver? It doesn't say when it would deliver. Should I buy a PS5? It comes with a controller. I'm buying a PS5. I'm buying a fucking PS5. And then we could play other games on it.
When does the new Spider-Man come out? I just bought a fucking PS5. Bro, Babu and Morocco, thank you for the fucking 20k biddies and, and the fucking 57,000 bits, dude. I just bought a PS5 now. Just because, like, when people give big-ass donos like that, I want to reinvest it into the stream, right? So I bought a PS5. All right. Drake up the sub. Now we have every console. <laughs> now I have a Switch. Now I have a PC VR. Well, I don't have an Xbox Series X anymore, but, I mean, any exclusive on Xbox I could play on PC. And now we have the PS5. Dub. Kabon for the three. Thank you for the fucking biddies, Babu and Morocco. Your money has gone to a PS5 to reinvest into stream. I appreciate the fucking biddies. Y'all are fucking dubs for that. Those connections. Oh, wait. Wait, DJ just sent the, the link for the life-size cutout. Oh, I have to pick the image? See, I don't know how to do that. I wouldn't want to fuck that up. I'll let my mods do that. All right, doctor for the sub. He knew where he lived. So the idea that this Christmas oh, comes out October 20th. Okay. Do y'all want me to play the new Spider-Man now? If a guy waited outside Amanda's boyfriend's house suddenly became a possibility. As an idle threat, Amanda's boyfriend sent an Instagram DM to Christopher that she was filing for a restraining order if he bothered her again. Oh, I could do until dawn too. <gasps> we could fucking play until dawn. J once for the 5550 fucking bits. Oh my god. Yo, we could play Until Dawn now. We could play the new fucking Spider-Man. Oh, that'll be so sick. Play the quarry already did. Outlast, that's not even an exclusive. Dude, Jay wants, thank you for the, or Jay wants, Jay wants it all. Thank you for the 5,550 bits, dude. My God. But his response was him acting confused and claiming he hadn't bothered her. Whether it was acting or not is a mystery, but nothing happens again at Amanda's house after that. So it doesn't seem too far-fetched that it could have been this Christopher guy. The following dash cam footage was taken in the vehicle of Uber driver Christina Spacuza. Oh, I've seen this. And I want to warn you, while there is no actual graphic footage shown, the story behind it is upsetting. 38-year-old mother of four, Christina Spacuza, was doing some night drives on February 10th, 2022, when 22-year-old Calvin Crew used his girlfriend's phone to order an Uber. Christina accepted the ride and picked Calvin up. He gets into the car in a sketchy mask covering his entire face except for his glowing eyes. She greets him by asking for Tanea and how are you today? But he doesn't answer either question. Or if he did, it was likely an inaudible grunt. Hi, Tanea. How are you today? Christina was extremely polite to Calvin, even asking how his day was going a few minutes in. Did you have a good day today? Calvin is seen turning to check if the coast was clear and then lifting his mask up slightly before pulling a gun on Chris. If I'm an Uber driver, I'm going to say off rip though. I'm not picking this motherfucker up. For Christina, how's your day? No response and he's wearing a fucking ski mask. Get out of my car. <laughs> Samuel for the sub. I, I remember seeing part of this video. I don't remember if she's okay. I hope she is. Christina and threatening her. You got a family too and you're a fucking douchebag loser trying to fucking hold somebody at gunpoint. Trying to make gun money for their family, you fucking dickbag. What are you doing? Like, I know motherfuckers have problems, but like, you're literally holding a, a nice lady at gunpoint, you fucking bitch. Please stop. Yeah, the call on me. He killed her? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing this? To where? I cannot do that. Why are you doing this? He tells her to cancel the ride so that it could no longer be tracked. Not long after, he grabs her phone to gain access to her banking apps to transfer money to his girlfriend's phone. Before grabbing the dash cam and throwing it out the window, he tells her that everything will be okay if she does what he says. In all honesty, in all honesty, I'd probably open the door and jump out. Ah, but he's going to shoot her. But that later proved to be a lie. Christina's body was discovered by an Amazon driver two days later, 
lying in the woods 50 feet off the road with a single gunshot wound to the head. Detectives found Christina's dashboard camera along the route of her last Uber ride, and the footage provided all the evidence necessary to prosecute Calvin for her murder. Prosecutors are currently seeking the death penalty for Calvin. Good. 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 Yeah, like cover your face with a fucking folder, you fucking loser. Oh my god. Give him life in prison. Give him life in prison, dude, please. Nah, don't give him the death penalty. Give him life in fucking prison. Bro's like 26. Not 26. He looked like 35. Let him fucking live in prison for the next 50 fucking years. Fuck that guy. What are you what is your fucking problem? Oh my god. Dude, Uber drivers are some of the nicest fucking people I've ever met. And this guy's just gonna fucking oh, like why do you why kill her? Why fucking kill her? Steal her money, that's one thing. You're gonna fucking murder her?